My ex-wife called me last night, sobbing and begging for help. Guess her affair partner finally showed his true colors and bailed. Now she's broke, jobless, and facing eviction. Part of me felt a twisted satisfaction, hearing her so desperate. But then guilt crept in. After all, we were married for 12 years. Am I the asshole for refusing to help her? <laughs> Audience, we all know the answer to that. Let me back up. I'm 38 and work in IT. Marsha is the same age as me. I met her in college. We got married young. We had a good life, two kids and yearly vacations. I thought we were happy. Turns out I was the only one. <laughs> Three years ago, I noticed Marsha acting weird. Always on her phone, working late, picking fights over nothing. My gut said something was off, but I ignored it. Remember people, pay attention to those gut signs. Didn't want to be the paranoid husband who snoops or accuses. One night, I'm up late finishing a work project. Marsha said she was tired and was going to bed. I told her good night, but something told me to try and take a peek at her phone. So before she turned in, she went to the bathroom and left her phone on the dresser. I went to look at it, but no text messages or anything weird or suspicious. But as I started to walk away, a message pops up from N from accounting. Can't wait to taste you again tomorrow, baby. <laughs> wow. But her phone just lit up. It didn't even vibrate. She had it on do not disturb. My world imploded. I confronted her immediately. She denied it at first, then trickled out the truth over weeks. She'd been sleeping with this guy from her office for months. Said she was lonely, felt neglected, blamed me for working too much, not being emotionally available. Classic cheater script. I was devastated, but tried to make it work for the kids. I don't know why people live in misery to try and make a marriage work after they found out their partner cheated. What the fuck is wrong with co-parenting? Are people afraid to co-parent? <laughs> we did counseling, date nights, the whole nine yards, but the trust was gone. Every time she was late or got a text, my mind went to dark places. After six miserable months, I filed for divorce. It got ugly fast. Marsha fought me on everything, custody, assets, you name it. Dragged it out for over a year. Meanwhile, she moved in with her AP, flaunting their relationship on social media. Posted pics of them with my kids, calling him their bonus dad. It was like twisting a knife. Finally got the divorce settled last year. I got primary custody. Turns out judges don't look kindly on moms who dish their families for affairs. I kept the house. Marsha was a recovering alcoholic. Marsha got visitation and a decent settlement. Last I heard, she and her AP bought a condo together. Seemed like she got her fairy tale ending. Yep, sure seems that way. Cut to last night. The phone rings at 11 p.m. It's Marsha. She's hysterical, barely coherent. Between sobs, I piece together what happened. Her AP lost his job a few months back. Started drinking heavily, gambling away the money they had saved. When Marsha confronted him, he got nasty. Called her used goods. Said he never loved her. Just wanted an easy lay and free childcare for his kids. Yeah, turns out he had two from a previous marriage she didn't know about. He cleared out their bank account and vanished. <laughs> Damn, they always think the grass is greener. Shit, sounds like her grass was brown from the start. Now, Marsha is left holding the bag. She quit her job when she moved in with her AP, thinking he'd support her. The condo is in his name only. She's got no money, no job prospects, and the condo is about to be foreclosed on. Her family won't help. They cut her off when she left me for her AP. She begged me to let her move back in, just until she gets on her feet. Promised she'd change, realized what she threw away. Said she still loved me, wanted another chance. I shut that down real quick. Told her she made her bed, now she can lie in it. She lost it, screaming that I was heartless, that I'd be leaving the mother of my children homeless. Played the what would the kids think card, I hung up on her. Sometimes those manipulation tactics don't work. Now in the cold light of day, I'm second guessing myself. Yeah, Marsha hurt me bad, but we have history, share kids. Is it wrong to enjoy her misfortune? Should I have shown her more compassion? Part of me says, fuck her. 
She deserves everything she's getting. Why should I clean up her mess? But another part feels guilty. What? Why would you feel guilty? She played a stupid game and won a stupid prize. What if she ends up on the street? How do I explain that to our kids? I ran it by my buddy Dave over some beers. He thinks I'm nuts for even considering helping her. Says I don't owe Marsha shit. That helping her would just enable more bad behavior. Probably right, but it doesn't sit easy. My sister has a different take. She thinks I should offer Marsha a loan. Maybe help her find a job. Says it's the high road. Sets a good example for the kids. But is that just being a doormat? <laughs> yeah, probably. I'm torn. On one hand, Marsha made her choices. She blew up our family, put me through hell during the divorce. Why should I lift a finger to help her now? Let her face the consequences of her actions. But on the other hand, she's still the mother of my children. If she ends up homeless or worse, that affects the kids too. Plus, there's a tiny part of me that still cares about her, despite everything. 12 years of marriage doesn't just vanish. I've thought about compromises. Maybe I could loan her some money, but with strict conditions. Or help her find a job, but maintain firm boundaries. But is that opening Pandora's box? Give her an inch, she might take a mile. There's also the question of what to tell the kids. They're 10 and 8, old enough to pick up on things. If they find out mom's in trouble and I refuse to help, how would that shape their view of me, of relationships in general? I've been doing well since the divorce. Got a nice pay raise at work, started dating again, finally felt like I was moving on. Now this mess threatens to drag me back into the drama. Part of me wants to just block Marsha's number and wash my hands of it all, but I know that's not realistic. We're connected for life through our kids. I can't just pretend she doesn't exist, as tempting as that sounds. I'm also worried about setting a precedent. If I help Marsha now, does that mean she'll come running every time she's in a jam? I've worked hard to establish boundaries post-divorce. Don't want to blur those lines. There's a petty part of me that wants to rub her nose in it, to say, I told you so, and watch her squirm, but I know that's not healthy. Two wrongs don't make a right and all that. I've considered reaching out to Marsha's family. Maybe they'd be willing to help if they knew how dire things were. Friends have suggested I offer to take the kids full time while Marsha sorts herself out. It would give her space to get back on her feet without worrying about childcare. But I worry about the impact on the kids. They've already been through so much upheaval. I keep coming back to the question, What's my responsibility here? Legally, I don't owe Marsha anything beyond what's in our divorce agreement. Morally, that's murkier territory. If the situation were reversed, would Marsha help me? Honestly, I doubt it. She's already been pretty self-centered, but does that justify me acting the same way? I'm trying to imagine how I'll feel about this decision five to 10 years down the line. Will I regret not helping or will I be glad I stood my ground? At the end of the day, I know I need to do what's best for my kids and my own mental health, but figuring out what that is feels impossible right now. So here I am, Reddit, am I the asshole for refusing to help my ex-wife or am I just protecting myself from getting burned again? What would you do in my shoes? Audience, help them out. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.